Let's talk about how to handle questions that have an image or some other information that's utilized across multiple questions. In the language of exam view, this is called a narrative. So for example, question 60, when you look at the 1980 exam, is a motion question, and you've got a, a speed versus time graph, and then you have a series of five or so questions that depend on that. How does one encode that into exam view? So here I've already done it for this exam, so I'll first show you what that looks like. This is what's known as a narrative. It's a piece of text or image or both that precedes a question or groups of questions. The easiest way to enter that is if you were to enter a question like this, and then you're going to add a narrative, or in this case I've already selected it. You want to name them something, because you do have to save them, that is uh, useful. For example, I called this 1980 underscore 61 underscore 66 because this narrative goes with questions 61 to 66. So let's go over how one would do this. So I'm going to create a new question bank because I'm just going to do it from scratch to show you how this works. Uh, we'll name it example with narratives. And I'm going to insert a new question. Again, I like to uh, use the control N shortcut. It's multiple choice. And I'll just call it a gibberish question one that uses a narrative. And the choice seems to be one, two, three, four. And let's say we have some image from this exam that we want to use. What you need to do is you need to go down here where it says narrative. Now because this exam doesn't have any narratives already, there's none to select from the drop down, we've got to create it from scratch. And I'm going to make it new, and I'm going to give it a name. So if we're doing that group there, that's 61 to 66, I would name this narrative 1980 underscore uh, 61 underscore 66. It's not critical that you name it uh, in a system because it doesn't get exported later when you do it to Moodle, but in terms of keeping the exam accurate, it does make it a little bit easier. So now you just enter it like it was a question. You know, this is my narrative. Check out the questions below. And if I want an image, we do just like we do for the questions. I pull up the PDF file, and then I use the snapshot tool and I go back over to my newly created narrative paste or as I like to do control V and now all I do is I record and this is the narrative that I'm going to select done and it's going to be there so when I record this question the narrative is all automatically there so if I click here you can see that it's there now if I want to make another question in this set, what I do is I just insert another question. And I'm going to select that narrative. Now because I named it by a convention, I know this is the narrative I want. And now I can just go ahead and make question number two with its choices. Now notice how it just uh, shows up under question one. Both of these refer to this narrative. And I can double check. It's a good idea before you upload your exam view bank to the Regents Physics Project because you'll want to double check that it has the right narrative and that it does indeed uh, have it. Uh, I will say when you're making the text of the narrative, it's probably best to not type in anything that says, you know, refers to questions 61 to 66. Uh, when I did it, I just made it something generic, like refer to questions below, or to answer the following questions, or answer the question according to this. Any, anything like that uh, would be done. So it's simpler to add a narrative for a group of questions rather than adding this image to every single question. Uh, the Regents exams, as you look at them towards the end, are all in groups of questions. So this narrative feature is something you're going to want to use a lot. As always, hope this is helpful.